Welcome to day 10 of 21 Days of Immersed in the Blessing. I'm John Carmichael, pastor at Evangel North Church, and we are so glad that you are walking with us on this journey of being immersed in the blessing, where every day we're taking one of the seven redemptive names of God and spending some time teaching on uh, that name, what that means, how to access it, and then we're going to spend some time in praying for you. Now, you can get this a number of different ways. I don't know which way you're watching today. Some of you are at evangelnorth.net forward slash immersed. On that, there's tools, fasting pamphlet, a prayer guide for you to use to go right along with what we're doing. Others of you, you're at YouTube at John Carmichael Ministries. And in the playlist, Immersed in the Blessing, regardless, we encourage you, both of these are great ways to access all of the 21 days of being immersed in the blessing. And we hope, and in fact, we know it's been a blessing to many people. We're getting testimonies, how they're encouraged. We're seeing many, many people uh, view this, share this, and we do encourage you, share this. Don't let this be a secret. If this is being a blessing to you, then we encourage you Share this on whatever platform, whatever you're comfortable, encourage people to be a part of it. Today we're at day 10 and we are looking at the name Yahweh Jireh, the Lord who is your provider. And for a few minutes I want to talk to you about God being your provider. About how God wants to supply your needs. So I want us to look at a very familiar passage or verse, but let's look at a passage that surrounds it, and then I think it'll help give us some insight. It's found in the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4, and Paul here in Philippians 4, verses, verse 15, he's going to talk to them about something he calls the matter of giving and receiving. Now this is an interesting subject matter. It is a subject matter of, that we need to learn. Paul taught this uh, probably extensively here, I would say more extensively in my opinion, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. Can you imagine two entire chapters of the Bible being in the New Testament, being dedicated to the offering? Boy, you hear some people talk about the offering. They won't talk about it. I go to ch I've seen churches that brag about not publicly receiving an offering and I just think that's very interesting when I look at the New Testament and the New Testament in every one of the epistles refers to the offering in some way and even in the gospels we see it so I think it's important for us to learn Paul here is teaching about the subject matter verse 15 of giving and receiving now he says Look, I've received a gift more than once for my needs. So they were providing for him. They were helping him. And they were just being good. You say, oh, we're just being good. We don't expect anything from the Lord. That is not how Paul taught giving and receiving. So he just said, look, here's the matter. Here's the teaching. Here's the topic of giving and receiving in verse 15. Then in verse 16, he says, look, you've provided for me. So in what ways are we talking giving and receiving? We're talking material needs here. That's what he said, more than once for my needs. And then he's going to say this statement, not that I seek a gift in and of itself. And I think this is where the perversion comes in. When people teach this because they're teaching it to you because they're seeking a gift for themselves. When Paul said, he said, look, I'm not teaching this to you because I'm seeking a gift. He said, but I'm teaching this to you for your benefit. And I think that's the key to taking an offering and receiving an offering. When the message, and I think what happens is we kind of discern that the person who's teaching us about giving and receiving and blessing and prosperity, they're really doing it for their benefit, saying, hey, you give to me. You give to my ministry, and then God, God's going to bless you. It's not what Paul said. Paul said, look, I'm not seeking a gift. He said, I just want things to go good for you. I want this to increase, he said, I want, or he said, I seek profit which increases to your account. That's what his motivation was. He said, but I have all, I've received everything, I'm full, I have abundance. All oh, people say, oh, it didn't work for the apostles. Well, here Paul says, I have abundance. I am amply supplied for, 
having received from Epaphroditus what you've sent, a, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So these things that they were sending to Paul to meet his needs, turns out that's not just a little financial transaction. It turns out it became an offering to God. It became something that meant something to the Lord. They're sending money, food, clothes, parchments, stuff like that. But all of that stuff turns out to be an offering unto God. It looks like it's going to Paul, but actually it's going to God. Now look at what Paul said. And my God will supply all of your needs. In what way? Wait, wait. Remember he just said he was provided for. He said the God that has provided for me, the God that is taking care of me, and depending on how people read church history and where Paul was at the writing of the book of Philippians, many people believe that he was under house arrest. So here he is in house arrest and God is providing for him. Here he is in a negative, adverse situation, and God's providing. He said, in the same God that is providing for me here in house arrest, he, should, he said, shall supply shall all of your needs, every need that you have, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing? That as I give and as I sow and as I bless my church and the men and women of God that he tells me to give to, that as I'm sowing and blessing them, that it looks like I'm giving money and stuff to people, but actually I'm doing it as under the Lord. Paul said that when you do that, it opens the door for God to provide for you. It opens the door for God to supply. So as I give, what I'm really doing is connecting to God for provision. When you give, you are connecting to God for provision. Now, I haven't asked anyone during these 21 days, and then it's mercy to give. I've not asked you to sow a seed, but I'm just telling you, it would be to your advantage to be a giver this year, to be a giver. You want to tap into Philippians 4.19, then you need to do Philippians 4.18, and then you tap into Philippians 4.19. Now, I'm not saying that because I'm looking for an offering because I'm not. I'm saying this for your benefit. It is to your benefit that you give. It is to your benefit that you sow seed and you do what you can financially to give. You can do something. Every one of us can do something. You can give something. But as you give towards the things of God, I want to pray for you. And I'm going to pray the same prayer that Paul prayed. Get ready. Father, I pray for my friends today. And I thank you, Father, that you will supply all of their needs. Come on, I want you to receive this. God's going to meet your need. God's going to meet the need for money. God's going to meet the need for a car, for a house, for clothes, for food. In Jesus' name, for computers and phones and everything you need right now, God is supplying. God's giving you ideas. God's going to give you methods. God's going to give you strategies. Father, I pray today that you bring supernatural provision right now in the mighty name of Jesus for the glory of God. Father, I thank you for it. I praise you for it. I give you glory for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands up and just receive. Father, you're meeting all my needs. I'm a giver today. All my needs are getting met. All my needs are being provided for. In Jesus' holy name, for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. I want to thank you for joining me here on day 10 of 21 days of immersed in the blessing. We've looked at Yahweh Jireh, the Lord who is our provider. I want to encourage you to go back and listen to all the messages and keep staying focused in. Go back, listen to some of them multiple times. If you're particularly needing to deal with a particular area, maybe of healing, you're like, man, I'm fighting sickness. I'd go back and listen to those healing messages every day, all day long. I'd go back, maybe provision. You're like, man, I'm really struggling financially. Get that in your spirit. Build your faith and watch God do something amazing. Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you, and we encourage you to stay immersed in the blessing.